Hey y'all, it's Alana and welcome back to my channel. So if you're watching this video, I will officially be back in San Francisco. And the reason I wanted to make this video was because I have moved back and forth across country twice within a month and a half and that gets really expensive. So I wanted to share with you how you can move across the country for less than $1,000. It doesn't need to be as expensive as we make it out to be. So if you want to learn how I did it and if you plan on moving across the country from East Coast to West Coast or vice versa, then stick around because we're getting into the video right now. about three different categories in this video. I wanted to talk about how you can physically get there, how you were going to get your clothes there, and how you're going to get all of your items there. So let's first talk about how to physically get across the country for an inexpensive price. Most people will relocate across the country because of their job. One thing that you can try to do to help lower the cost of physically getting yourself across the country is to see if your company can pay for any relocation. I was very fortunate enough that my company was able to pay for my flight back to San Francisco. They weren't able to cover all the shipping expenses, but at least they were able to pay for my flight back, which is really helpful and that saves me a lot of money. And thankfully, they didn't have to spend that much money on me because the flights are so cheap due to coronavirus. But let's say you don't have that privilege. What are some other options that you can take if your company isn't able to relocate you? Let's say you're going across country to a city where you don't need your car, like San Francisco, you will just need to book a one-way flight. I think it's really important to sign up for airline reward systems because they can really help you save money in flights. So I have a Southwest membership where I am signed up for rewards. I have their credit card and I can get points when I spend things using my credit card or when I purchase flights with regular money. And when you book a one way, it basically costs you about like $5.60 in taxes. Your points make your flight so cheap. So that's something you can consider is signing up for airlines and building up points. Now, of course, you've had to have done this in the past, but if you aren't signed up with any airlines, then just get your one-way ticket because one-way tickets are always going to be cheaper than round trips. So that helps cut down the cost a little bit if you are planning on flying. Now, let's say that where you're going to requires a car. Let's say you wanna drive across country because it is really expensive to ship your car. That costs at least $1,000. This is a budget-friendly video. Have a friend go with you. Have them chip in for food, have them chip in for gas. That way it cuts half the cost of your spending when you're driving and they can even help you with accommodations as well. Split, split. Split. It will really cheapen the cost for you. The great thing about driving across the country is that you can use your car to physically pack all your stuff so that way you're not paying for shipping services to get all your stuff across the country and that helps you save some money. So do your research on different kinds of hotels or motels that you can stay at for a really cheap cost and that way it will save you the stress of physically getting across the country. I know that's a huge trip. Most people take about five to seven days to do that. Some people may take longer because our country is enormous. So those are some things to keep in mind to help you save some money while doing so. Another quick thing that I wanna note is if you need money to move across the country and you are going to a city where you don't need a car, let's say you're moving from the West Coast to the East Coast, let's say that city is New York. You don't need a car in New York, so consider selling your car as well. That way you can make a little bit of extra cash to help you pay for relocation expenses. Another little hack for you guys. So this hack is going to be the most effective if you are planning on flying out to your next destination of where you're going to live. So one thing that is great is that you can check your bags obviously at the airport. Bring two big suitcases with you and try to fit as many clothes as possible. If you're able to get all your clothes in two big suitcases, that is great. I unfortunately can't do that. What's great about Southwest, and I highly recommend you use Southwest because I just feel like everything is always so cheap with them. Your check bags are free. You don't have to pay $30 to check a bag and if you have to check a second bag it costs you like what 60 bucks that's a lot of money right there but if you go through Southwest then you don't have to spend any money when you check your bags and that just saves you such a big headache right there as I mentioned I can't just pack two bags and call it a day I have a lot of clothes so I still pack my two bags with me and check them but I still need to get the rest of my clothes there you can ship the rest of your luggage using third-party shipping services through FedEx. 
and it will typically cost you about 70 to 200 dollars depending on how many extra bags you need and that is total so i would say three bags is probably going to cost you like 200 something dollars one bag is probably going to cost you between 70 to 80 dollars so it's not that horrible if you think about it and it's just a better way to just save your money and not pay for a big moving truck to ship everything across the country so that's one way of how you can get all your clothes there so let's talk about shipping your stuff. There are two big things I wanna talk to you about. So the first one is how you can rack up some cash to relocate all your personal items across the country. So if you are going from another apartment to another apartment and you already have furniture, the best thing that you wanna do is just to sell all of your furniture. That way you make money to purchase new furniture when you get there. That way it's not costing more money out of your pocket. You will already have that money ready available for you to purchase newer and better furniture than what you had before. I know it can be really hard to give up furniture that you absolutely love, but it's just not worth paying for moving services to haul it across the country. That will cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. And if you have that kind of money, that's great. But most people I know don't have that kind of money. So sell all your furniture, make some easy cash off of it, and use that to go and buy new furniture. What about the rest of your stuff? So I'm gonna tell you what I did to ship out some of my larger items. I shipped a rug across country. I shipped this ring light that I use across country, and it only costed me about $350. I am trying to lower that cost when I move back because when I was moving from San Francisco back to Virginia, I realized that I had way too much stuff that I really didn't need to take with me to San Francisco in the first place. Now I know what I really need with me and what I don't really need. What I used to ship all of my stuff was a service through Greyhound called Bus Freighter. Bus Freighter is probably the cheapest way to ship personal items across the country. So it's going to vary based off how many boxes you plan on shipping across the country. Every price is determined by the weight, the value, and the number of boxes that you have. And I remember, like I said, it was around $350 for 12 boxes. It was pretty insane and I really recommend you using Bus Freighter. I want to note that everything that I mentioned is literally just about getting your stuff and you physically back across the country. I didn't include rent and your rent deposit in this because those are completely separate things. So it is really important that you already have the money to pay for a new apartment. But I can tell you one thing that I have done to help me pay for rent and deposit. I finally got my security deposit back. Depending on how much your security deposit is, I had to pay a really big security deposit when I first moved into my old apartment back in San Francisco. And I got that back and I was able to use that deposit money for another apartment deposit. So that really saved me because I got that money back only to just put it back into another apartment deposit again. So that was really helpful. Now, as far as the rent goes, I have been driving for Postmates to kind of help me get some cash, and I have been also saving my unemployment benefits as well, but it hasn't been quite enough because I also have credit card bills that I have to pay. So another thing that you can do, if you're really strapped for cash and you feel like everything that I've done for you still can't apply to you, then the last thing that I recommend, but it could be not such a horrible thing, is to take out a small loan to help you with all of this. I would say maybe like $3,000 and you can pay it off in three years. I think that's a really easy loan to pay back and especially if you have a full-time job, you may even be able to pay that back even quicker. I did take out a small loan just for my rent. Having a small little loan taken out that you can easily pay back can really make a difference. I recommend Upstart, that's a great service to get a quick and easy loan. Do you need to have a certain credit score to get this kind of loan? You can even get an approved loan with really bad credit. I believe the limit is like what? 598 that's something you can take into consideration and use as a last resort if you simply cannot come up with enough money for any of this but taking out a loan isn't the worst thing in the world and i personally feel like it is a lot easier to pay back once you have sustainable income and you can determine how much you can pay for that loan but you still have to pay the minimum of course i am so excited to be back in san francisco i really hope that these tips helped you and if they did help you make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my videos because i got so much more san francisco content coming out i am so excited for the change and i can finally start posing that next week i'll be showing you my move back to san francisco and i will see you in my next video bye